How much does it bother you? How much time do you think about the fact that the two wealthiest men in the world, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, are spending a lot more time actually thinking about outer space uh, than they are about climate uh, on the planet we're on? Well, I think, I think it's a missed opportunity. Let's put it that way. I mean, Jeff Bezos has recently, you know, handed out a lot, a lot of uh, cash. And what for the environmental community counts as a lot of cash. Um, but as you say, both of them are pushing. And, you know, you can hear Elon Musk talk about, you know, how we're going to have to all live off Earth. And many people have uh, made the point that it would be extremely difficult, even if we really devoted ourselves to it, and we're doing it, you know, we're doing as much as we can uh, to make life difficult on, on planet Earth for ourselves. But there's, you know, virtually nothing we could do to make it as difficult as life on Mars, where there's, you know, among other things, no oxygen. Uh, so, you know, why very smart and very wealthy men, I'm afraid they're usually men, uh, think that, you know, this is the way to go, you, you're going to have to ask them. I wonder when we talk about climate and we talk about countries that are so much poorer, that are being so much more affected by these trends and that haven't yet had their chance to industrialize, how do you tell them, actually, no, we need you to do much more of the belt tightening? Well, I mean, you could say, you know, the good news, I suppose you could say is, is we're, we're not saying that to them. I mean, if we want to meet, for example, the, the target set by the UN, the, the big changes have to occur in those parts of the world that are the big emitters. I mean, that, that's actually you know, how the math works. The US is the single biggest emitter in a historical sense. It's the Correct. second biggest emitter now on an annual basis, but it's still the biggest emitter in a historical sense. And we have to uh, show that there are different ways of developing. If we, if we can't do that, uh, as the most technologically advanced country in the world, then, you know, A, it's sort of sad, uh, and B, then we probably are in a pretty uh, desperate situation. Well, no, but China is going to be the largest economy in the world in short order. They are already the largest carbon emitter by a sig significant factor in terms of annual right now. And of course, they're still a poor country. India is going to be the second largest emitter in relatively short order. They're an incredibly poor country. Brazil, um, we, you know, responsible for so much of the forest cover in the world, clear cutting it now with reckless abandon. But, you know, they're still a poor country and we're not prepared to pay them very much to stop doing that. So how much of this needs to be an equity conversation from the wealthy countries with the poorer countries in the world? And do you think that that is actually something that the rich countries are in any way prepared to do? Well, I, I, I think you're absolutely right that equity is an enormous issue in climate change. And that is, you know, absolutely the great, one of the great challenges of trying to imagine a way through uh, to 2100. Um, but, you know, the alternative is just throwing up your hands and saying, well, this is the way it's going to be. It's going to be, you know, a healthscape for our kids in 2100, our grandkids. Uh, and I don't think that most Americans, uh, to start with, I can't really speak for people in other countries, I don't think that they really want to say that. So these are the challenges that we're going to have to try to think our way through, that there's no other option.